Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Comic Source Comic Boom collaboration. Time for Daily Spawn. We're up to issue number 48. Good issue, a bit of a setup issue. So this is probably going to be a pretty quick uh, episode because it's, it's interesting the way McFarlane does it. We get character moments, and there are times when characters show up, and they're probably on the panel in terms of storytelling uh, to, to advance the narrative, to advance the plot lines. They're probably on can they get more of a spotlight than they actually need just to get across the, the points that we're trying to get across. But, but that's okay. I don't mind a setup issue like this definitely feels like, you know, being that this is issue 40 that we're building to, to something big in issue 50, which is, you know, sort of typical for a, a book, especially when it's reaching 50, as opposed to 150 or 250, you know, it's, it's a decent milestone. Uh, but the other thing that this does, the fact that, McFarland lingers on some characters is it, it gives us a chance to get some characterization, some character moments. As I said, some of these characters, you know, before the last two or three issues, we really hadn't checked in on them very much for quite a period of time. And I even commented on how, you know, if this is a monthly book that people might've forgotten some of those, uh, some of those plot lines because McFarland was focused on spawn being uh, in, in the South or we had the Christmas issue uh, and that sort of thing. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen and we will uh, take a look at the credits and what goes on in the issue. So as I said, issue 48, we're continuing the pattern of trading off issues as far as the pencil artist between Tony Daniel and Greg Capullo. So this is a Tony Daniel issue. As we've seen before, he, he really loves the bats when it comes to spawn. Uh, I don't know if it's a vampire thing or or what, but he certainly loves to put bats in his background. So uh, here we have the credits. This issue is called The System, McFarlane on Story, Tony Daniel on Pencils, Kevin Conrad Inks, Tom Orzakowski Letters, Tom Broker and Roy Young do the colors. We get a quick, a quick issue of 47. We knew that uh, Tremor had brought uh, Billy Scambino to talk to Spawn so that Spawn could find out what exactly uh, Gravano was doing and, and why he was spying on Wanda and Terry and Cyan and to some extent Jason Wynn. Meanwhile, the clown met with Wynn and let Wynn know that Spawn had returned and was still weak and now was the time to make the move. Um, and when Wynn you know, was asking, you know, what, what exactly is all this? Like, why are you so out to get Spawn? We got some motivation for Vindicator. He talked about how he didn't like that Malbolgia considered humans to be more intelligent, you know, more manipulative, more cunning. Um, and Violator felt that the denizens and kind of worshipers and followers of Malbolgia that had been born in hell were better suited to lead hell's army. So he wants to sort of beat Spawn at his own game, prove to Malbolgia that he can be just as cunning, just as manipulative, just as intelligent as a human. Meanwhile, Cog was looking for Spawn. And when he saw a big barricade around the area that Spawn normally hangs out in, he wondered, uh, Cog Gaustro had wondered if uh, the costume had finally taken over. We know it's been uh, evolving. So Later, Twist goes and confronts uh, Gravano, finds his own brother David there, and realizes that David works for Gravano. And just as uh, David was actually about to take out Tremor, not believing that it was his brother, uh, and Tremor unwilling to attack his brother, Spawn shows up, saves the day, but blows off David's leg, and Tremor and Spawn end up having to leave to save David's life but not before Spawn warns uh, Gravano once again, hey, you know, I told you to leave these people alone. Stop following Wanda, stop following Terry, stop following Cyan. Um, and Gravano like, well, you're, you're not, you'll never get, a, get away with this. And I have all my men outside. And when he peeks outside, you know, they're all jumbled up in a pile because Spawn took care of him before he ever got inside the house. So interesting dynamic. Spawn, Al Simmons definitely seems to be losing control with all the stress and everything that he's, had to go through lately so this issue kicks off and it's been a while since we've had a wall of text so i guess that's why mcfarland decides to give us one it just describes the office uh and basically 
gives some context and lets us know just how powerful Jason Wynn is. It is interesting, though, he's referred to here as the CIA security head, as opposed to the head of the United States uh, secret security group was what it was called before, USSG, United States Security Group. So maybe McFarland decided to lean into more reality that way. Uh, anyway, we see Jason Wynn. He's at his desk in his opulent office, and he's getting some briefing on uh, a laundry list of different intelligence operations that are going on. Uh, on the next page, we check in with Sam and Twitch. And this is what I'm talking about, where some scenes that, that linger a little over long, uh, but it, it definitely feels like it's purposeful to add characterization. There's a lot of humor whenever Sam and Twitch are on the page. And basically, we see the offices that Sam leased out or is renting out for their own detective agency. It's in a, a rundown building that's a real shithole, for lack of anything better. But uh, Twitch is very reserved and doesn't, you can tell he doesn't let his, uh, his you know, frank thoughts out because Sam is so excited. He's like, oh, my God, look, look at this office. Look at this view. And it's just, you know, water towers and billboards. Oh, look, they fixed the window. Uh, you know, the doors are falling off the hinges. The place is dirty. There's no one else even on the whole floor because the building is just such a crappy place. And Sam takes that as a positive, right? They have, Nobody will be here to bother us. We have all this privacy. And as they're standing there kind of taking it all in, Sam beaming and Twitch, you know, very doubtful. Somebody slips an envelope under the door. It has a couple of pictures of some of the other men that were implicated in the file that had all the chief banks information, as well as some pictures. And obviously, they're right away, they're wondering, hey, who gave this to us? What do they know? Could it have been Spawn? They peek outside of the floor of the building. They don't find anybody. They're just not sure where all this information came from. Um, but it's a start uh, in order to try to take down some of those other people that got away scot-free when Chief Banks uh, killed himself. So when we check in on the alley, some of the homeless there are complaining about Spawn. Uh, like, what is he doing? He's never here anymore. We never know what he's up to. It seems like he just brings trouble. Um, it doesn't seem to be a, a particular friend. He's just a freak. And uh, Bootsy and Bobby are, are, are kind of pushing back on the other guys saying, hey, we were kind of a mess when we came here you know we weren't a walk in the park this guy's trying to figure things out he's not like us first of all so you know we, we need to take it with a grain of salt and, and try to be there for him and, and the other guys are like no we, I, we don't know why you're buying into this guy's uh garbage you know he he's he's not somebody that we should have anything to do with you know, he's out to get us just like everybody else um so it's a, it's an interesting dichotomy that Boots and uh, and Bobby seem to be caught in. They, they seem to be on Al's side, and he, he certainly has confided in those two more than anybody else, but everyone else has sort of turned against Spawn. You know, maybe they're just sick and tired of the chaos that he brings to their alley, uh, but we do see him back in that uh, uh, area of uh, the alleys where he hangs out, Rat City, and we see the bat again that Tony Daniel likes to, to always put on, on Spawn pages, and it seems like Spawn's lashing out. He's building up more and more barriers. We get a really cool looking full page spread there of him carrying some pipes around and, and building up these barriers. And while he's working on this, Cogliostro shows up and says, you know, what are you like, what are you doing? Are you are you there? Do you understand me? Or has the costume taken over? Is this the, what the costume is doing? And Spawn's like, the costume has nothing to do with this. And that, that kind of surprises Cogliostro. He's like, wait, so you're saying that you're purposely building your own prison, <laughs> like you're, you're isolating yourself, you're hiding from reality. Uh, and Spawn's like, yeah, you know, maybe that's what I am doing. So uh, I, I guess I have, I failed in, in whatever it is that you, you wanted me to do. And Cogliaster's like, well, you don't know the half of it. And that, that gets Al Simmons, that, that gets under his skin. And he's like, well, then tell me, you come in here, you make all these cryptic comments, you know, everybody's always telling me what to do and I'm, I'm sick of it. Like, if you have something to say, spell it out. Stop giving me all these hints, right? All these vague rumors and, and whatever. He's like, I, I'm sick of always trying to help people and nobody being grateful. You know, I'm sick of being a target, whether it's Tremor or Overkill or Curse or Jason Wynn. 
like I, he, it's like he's had it. Spawn just wants some some peace. Uh, so he's like, from now on, leave me alone. I don't exist. He really does seem like he wants to hide. Um, and Cogliostro is kind of like, well, that's the point, right? You're trying to pretend like you don't exist, but the point is that you do, but you can't accept that you exist. You you won't like accept your that you're alive and that you can have some agency and make some good decisions because all you do is make bad ones and he kind of walks off. So uh, it does seem like he's Al Sims very unstable right now. He's having a tough time. He doesn't have anyone to turn to, you know, Cogliostro could be a confidant. He could help spawn, you know, I, I won't put all the blame on spawn, but Cog, he, you could volunteer information. Spawn's right. When he says that Cog's always, you know, real vague and insinuating things rather than just coming out and saying it. And I get the whole idea, right? Like you want to teach a guy to fish, so he can eat for the rest of his life instead of just giving him the fish and he can eat for one day, right? You don't just want to give Spawn the answers. You want to let him discover on his own and learn those lessons and make mistakes and learn from them. But you got to give him a little bit of help. And it feels like Cog's not giving uh, anything right now. Um, then we check in on uh, on Wanda. And again, th th here's another scene where it maybe lasts a little longer than we need it to. It's a whole page for us to basically learn that she fills in over her head with this hospital project. She's got the construction going on with the children's ring, but she agreed to help out with this financial audit that is going on. And she doesn't really know anything about finances. So uh, she feels overwhelmed and, and overworked. And so definitely stressed out and ripe for violator Jason Wynn to push her in just the right spot and kind of cause her some issues. Uh, then we, talk, we check in with Terry Fitzgerald again, this lasts way longer than it needs to, but it's definitely ex uh, establishing tone and context. It seems like Terry's gotten a breakthrough. He's got some solid evidence that ties Wynn to some wrongdoing. Unfortunately, when he takes it out to give to his secretary and says, hey, um, you know, put these away where I, where I need them, uh, make sure they're safe, not realizing that Jason Wynn is like right there behind him. And so the wind's like, oh, did you find what we, we've been looking for? Let me see it. Terry's like, oh, no, no. Uh, I, I want to be sure. I don't want to show you anything until my final report. Is Wynn suspicious? It sort of seems like it, but he says he's not. But we know that Terry's been burning the candle at both ends. When he goes back into his office, he actually passes out on his computer for four minutes. Uh, and that scares him. And so he ends up heading home to get some rest. He is still suffering from that sickness or whatever it was that Wanda gave him. But as nervous as he is and as worried as he is, you know, he had blurry vision earlier. He's had the coughing. Now he, he literally passed out on top of his computer, but he doesn't tell Wanda anything. He keeps it to himself, which not the best idea. You know, if, if something's going wrong with you, uh, you should confide in the people. Like, what if you don't wake up? What if you slip into a coma and, you know, she knows nothing about it? So, yeah, he's he's burning the candle at both ends. I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to be the man. He's trying to be the hero. Uh, but, man, you, you can't be too careful with your health. Meanwhile, back at the crappy building where Sam and Twitch have their offices, apparently they tried to take their ele the elevator up to their floor and it got stuck right before the doors open on their floor. So they have to force the doors open and there's plenty of um, kind of one-liners and, and jokes and whatnot here. Uh, and then when they get into their office, they're talking about what they've been doing that day. They've been basically running down leads uh, from that envelope that was passed under their door to see if the information contained there was accurate uh, seems like it is and so they're trying to figure out what their uh, what their next step will be and trying to figure out um, how whoever left it there left it uh, and so ultimately they decide that they're going to meet up with the person that left it because in that envelope along with the evidence and the pictures was uh, a rendezvous for the following day, hey, meet at this place. And so now that they've sort of vetted everything, they're willing to take the chance to go meet with whoever it is there that they uh, that left the uh, the envelope. Back in the alley in Rat City, when we check on Spawn, once again, he's performing the ritual where he's pulling out the evil energy of these worms. He's totally addicted. It's like even the way that it's depicted artistically the way it's described narratively definitely seems like a junkie sort of thing I, I, at this point it doesn't seem like the costume needs any healing anymore this 
definitely seems like something where it spawns in over his head. He's doing something he shouldn't, and he, he kind of knows it. Uh, and we get a clue for that beginning on the next page when we see uh, a couple of the homeless guys hanging around the fire barrel, drinking some booze. Bobby goes to relieve himself, and he gets grabbed from behind. It turns out it's Spawn that grabs him, and he says, I need, I need your help. Now, Bobby's the, the homeless one who's closest to, to Al, the closest thing Al has to a friend or a confidant, and he basically he admits that he has a problem. He's, he's like, there's, there's something going on with me. Um, I need to disappear for a while. So you need to spread word that I'm not around, but I'm not actually going anywhere. I'm just going to be hiding out in the alleys, but I need to be alone and figure this thing out. Now, whether Spawn can kind of get over this addiction now that he has to sucking up this evil energy on his own remains to be seen, but at least he's taken that first step of realizing that yeah, what you're doing is not okay, dude. Like, it, it, it really isn't. Um, and Bobby's kind of asking him, okay, where, well, where will you be? You know, what, what can I do? And Spawn's like, you know, it's better if you don't know any details. It's safer for you. My existence seems to uh, attract ugly things, and I have to hide away even from you. And, and Bobby says, uh, okay, you know, I, I owe you my life. I'll, I'll do what you want. Um, and then we do see on the uh, the next page that Spawn does go back to uh, to Rat City to his little area, and once again he's smashing things and building up walls and what have you. And we do get a counter, which hasn't changed. I think this is what we saw it at last time six seven eight six, uh, but definitely fo kind of fortifying and building himself a, a place to hide. So meanwhile, on the last page, we see Jason win talking to somebody on the phone once again, kind of similarly to how the issue started with him getting an intelligence report. And this time the voice on the other line is saying um, that the meeting is all set. We've, we've requested the meeting to be confirmed within 48 hours. The area is secure. We've established that all parties involved are going to maintain the distance so as not to bring attention to themselves. Uh, and uh, Win replies, okay, all I need is, uh, this, this is exactly the information I need to bring about the demise of our two friends. So you can't help but think, two friends, Sam and Twitch? So is this actually a trap? Is the information that was slipped under the door to, at Sam and Twitch's detective, uh, private detective offices actually from Jason Wynn? It was Jason Wynn giving, you know, providing information that he for the most part, he knew Sam and Twitch already had, but a way to bait them to show up at a certain time in a certain place so they can take him out because Sam and Twitch know too much. It seems to be that's what's implied, but not 100% sure because we do see the clown there as well. And his response when uh, after Wynn hangs up the phone is, I'm telling you, Jason, there ain't nothing like a good witch hunt. So are they going to go searching for somebody else? Is it searching for Spawn? Is it searching for, you know, it says our two friends. So in my mind, that's why I keep going to Sam and Twitch. But whether or not that's the case, um, I guess we'll have to wait and see. So like I said, a lot of character moments in this one and giving context and setup. The relationship between Sam and Cogliostro, its, it's status is definitely clear after their interaction. We know that uh, Wanda's exhausted. We know that Terry is is uh, tired, overworked, and has something health-wise going on. Uh, we know Spawn is acknowledging the fact that he there's something wrong. There's something going on beyond his control. Uh, we understand where Sam and Twitch are. They don't have a lot of leads. They certainly don't have any paying clients yet. They're trying to get on their feet. Uh, at the end of the day, especially Sam, is Sam Burke is a detective, right? So you give him a mystery, you give him a case, he's going to try to solve it. That's just what he's going to do. So despite the fact they're not getting paid, um, sliding that note under the door definitely piqued their interest. They're going to be looking into this. And, and is it them that are going to be the target for Jason Wynn? If so, can they turn the tables? Will they eventually team up with Spawn? So I guess we'll have to wait and see. As far as the art goes, uh, it's really fantastic. I, I really love this issue of art from, from Tony Daniel. The panel layouts, the page layouts, 
are probably not as dynamic as what Capullo is doing. Uh, but got to keep in mind, Capullo has been on the book working with McFarlane uh, a lot longer. But uh, it definitely seems like for the most part, we get traditional colors. It could be some of the backgrounds where we're getting some computerized color. But uh, it definitely looks traditional to me. It's definitely the foregrounds. There are a few pages, like maybe that fantastic splash with Spawn uh, building up the walls, the barriers around his, uh, his throne area, I guess you'd say. You know, there is some lightning in the background there. That looks a little digitally painted to me. Uh, but for the most part, this looks traditional. It looks really, really good. Tony Daniel is is a good storyteller. And, you know, just like almost every issue of Spawn, like I can't think of an issue of Spawn I've ever looked at where the art was what I would call bad. Like it's, it's almost always excellent. Uh, the very least, uh, probably the worst art I've ever seen on a Spawn issue, what I would call still above average so uh there's one thing you can say about spawn is that the the art is always top notch and does a great job of of telling the story so uh anyway that's going to do it for this episode uh really looking forward to the countdown to 50 uh hopefully rocky's going to be joining back up soon he's trying to get caught up he's uh probably probably just about at a point where he has the time to join but now he just needs to get caught up to uh, the same issues that that we're covering daily so uh, anyway that's going to do it for this episode everybody Hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of Daily Spawn. We appreciate you joining us as always, and we'll talk to you next time.